Do you have dogs that bark at you relentlessly when you get home? Because apparently my neighbor does. If you have to ask the question, does this leak memory? Let's just assume the answer is yes. Do you ever use pointers? Then your program probably leaks memory if you have to ask the question, does this leak? Yeah, it does. It does. So I'll, really all I'm going to explain is why it leaks memory when you use pointers and uh, some, some really easy ways to prevent it. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to show you a memory leak condition. Oh, look at that. It's already on my screen. You see this? Just a pointer to a double called Fiverr, and I'm creating a new double. It's pretty standard pointer stuff. Now what happens when you exit the program? or a function that this is in. Do you know? Okay, I know. I'll tell you. The pointer goes out of scope, but the data does not. It's just still sitting there, but the pointer to it is gone. That's the memory leak. So if I just ran this, I don't know if C++ is, might be smart enough to clean them up at the end of the program. I would assume not though, but this, just on its own, leaks memory. So how do you fix it? Well, before you exit, when you're all done using your pointer to your thing, you just do this. That's it. No longer leaks memory. Would you like to know more? Press 1 for yes. Press F to pay respects to memory you lost. Alright, so if you have pointers all over in your code and you use them all the time in functions and you, and you don't delete them when you're done with them, and they're just going out of scope and you think that frees the memory? Well, it doesn't. It frees the pointer, but it doesn't do anything with the memory. So, memory leak. Now, what's, what's hilarious to me is that most people code for a really long, long, long time before figuring this out. Or at least I did. Don't, don't judge me, okay? Don't, it's not what this is about. This isn't about judging each other smash like to not judge others. Okay, let's let's continue a little further. Well, by 2014, people finally decided this is dumb because you know when your your program gets complicated and you have to clean up pointers all over the place and, and maybe you have things that create them in a function and you know it just becomes chaos in a large program. And this could be anything. This could just be an integer. This could be some class that you made off to the side. Anything you make a pointer to, you have to delete it. And what if there are more pointers within the data? Well, you have to properly go through that data and clean up all the pointers within there. It's just chaos. It, so, finally, not in C++ standard 11, but in C++ standard 14, people decided that this is this is terrible and it kind of is so there's this thing that you can get if you're using C++ 14 and the memory header and this thing is called let's see if anyone can guess it before it goes say it in chat before I type it you got two seconds one two okay it's called unique pointer now all unique pointer is is a pointer that frees its data, that deletes its data when it goes out of scope. So it's just like that normal pointer before, except we didn't have to delete it and manage all that crap. We can just assume that it cleans up itself. So to use a unique pointer, it's in the standard library, and you declare what type you want. Maybe we want a double here. This can be a class, whatever, any kind of data object. And you give it a name, like, uh, I don't know, since I'm, there's like a million barky dogs in the background, I'm going to call this barky dog. <sighs> All right, so there you go. There's a unique pointer. And to uh, fill it with data, I could do an equals right here and make unique. Uh, I think you do the type again here, if I remember correctly. And then in parentheses, you do whatever you want to fill it with. Um, I don't know. We'll put a 5.2 five or 3 in here. So there we go. Now we have a pointer to a double with the value of 5.3 in it. Whereas before, our leaky one would have been like this. Um, um, new of the same type. 
except we would have had to delete this one to clean it up. With this one, with the unique pointer one, you don't have to clean it up. All you have to do is uh, let it go out of scope. All done. All right, so, so you'll, you'll find, you might have some questions about this. Of course, you can go look it up. There are a gazillion answers online. Just Google unique pointer, skip over Geeks for Geeks website that's always at the top because that's gonna be a bunch of nonsense and look for the actual uh, en.cpp site, you know, that has the actual uh, C++ standard stuff and look up unique pointer on there and you will find details about it. Like if I wanna get just the raw pointer out of this, all I do is this dot get and that's the pointer that's just like uh, so if you need if you have a function that wants a pointer you can you can type this in to do it this this is how you stop leaking memory with your your pointers you just use a unique pointer and stop worrying about it yes it took it it took uh, the standard I don't know when was did C C++ come out I don't know, it took like 20 years for him to decide that this was a good idea. Talk about things moving slow. This is why you should do things right away, because if you don't do it, nobody else will. That program you've been wanting to write, start right now, as soon as this video ends. Start using unique pointers in it. There you go. If you don't do it, someone else will write it and steal your idea, and you'll be like, ah, oh, I, I had that idea. I could have made millions. You got the idea, do it. Boom. There's your motivation. All right, so I guess I guess we'll compile this. Just just stop judging me, okay? It's it's seriously because I don't have a dash right here. That's what's happening. Oh god, I'm still having a problem. Let's dig in. Let's solve some more compiler issues. Truncated to fit undefined. Yeah, I don't actually know what this is. If you ever get something weird like this, one thing you can do is you can take the non nonsense part of it. If you see any like hashes, leave those out because Google's not going to understand your, your various hashes. And and just grab this. And you'll find answers. This is probably not the right one. I might also be... I think I should... <laughs> I think what this actually is, is I should be using... Should I be using G++? Yes, that was it. Stop judging me. I, I see you. I see you through my cam. All right. So now this works. Okay, so it's GCC is, is uh, I think, just for C files. G++ or C++. This is a, a GNU compiler through Sigwin. That was the problem. So we ran it, nothing happened. But if we see out this thing, something will happen. And we don't need C standard live. We'll just use IO stream for a moment to see out this sucker. And we should get something. So we'll recompile. And we'll run it. And we get its address because this is the pointer. So if we dereference the pointer and recompile, we should get the value of 5.3 as expected. So that's how you get the pointer out. It goes out of scope, doesn't leak, everything's good. Um, let's, let's do one last thing. Well, let's say you try it with C++11. Let's see what happens. Error. So if you get something that looks like this, not a member of standard, you, you, need, to, you need to do 14 instead. Okay, well, I hope this helps somebody out there. I hope this helps you guys not leak memory all the time and write better, more consistent, more stable programs. I'm looking out for you, mostly looking out for me, but I'm also looking out for you. So I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.